and Silver on um, XFM 104.9. I love the fact that Carl went a little bit mental then, so happy that he thinks that a lighthouse keeper pops the light on at the same time every... Are you telling me it was never foggy? Everyone has a routine in the job. <laughs> And why was he going home from work knackered? What had he been doing all day? He never said he went home knackered. He did, he said he went home, he's just done a day's work, he said he went home knackered and puts the light on and goes to sleep. That's what he said. Yeah, but he's maybe a part-time lighthouse keeper. Oh, what does he do? Works in the library, does he, as well? Now listen, Rick, don't, let's just, look, I'm really with Carl here. What? He definitely got you. He anyway, sits I you got up it right and properly. Anyway, I got it yeah, right. Yeah, but then you embarrass yourself by he's saying that- He's a stupid. That, but you, <laughs> he's you a stupid. You would never put what's a next lighthouse one? light on during the day. What's your, what's your next one? I have been painting it that day. Oh, are they? Extra shattered. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, this last one, this. Yeah. Lateral thinking. Lateral yeah. thinking. And you've, you've written this yourself? You've had no help from anyone? No, I've, I've come up with these on my own. Okay. <laughs> right, last one. Yeah. Um, this bloke, um, this bloke, this bloke, he's got a brother that is, um, never met, right? They got separated at birth. Right. Um, you know, anyway, he gets a letter in the post. Yeah. He says, oh, I tracked you down. Yeah. Um, meet me at the airport. Yeah. Okay. As soon as he gets to the airport, yeah. he goes, there he is, and he goes walking over. How did he know that was his brother? He'd, he'd never seen a They picture. were twins. They look exactly the same. They were born the same day. No, Steve's got it. Yeah, that's what I mean. So he knew they were born the same day, so he knew they were twins, yeah. I didn't say they were born on the same day, did no. I? No. No, I'm just reiterating. They would be, though, if they looked yeah. Exactly identical. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that when we've got you there, call me. Yeah. Mm. You're quite upset about that. That was one out of three, though. That's what about fair. this, then? Do you know that when, um, uh, uh, two brothers, born on the same day, of the same mother and the same father, but they weren't twins? Why? Say, say that one again. Two brothers. Yeah. Are born on the same day. Of the same mother and father, but they they weren't twins. Why not? <sighs> this is good radio. I d you see, the, the problem is, I heard you saying to Steve, "I'm going to do that one about the shark in the pool." So I'm trying to think. <laughs> this is nothing to do with that one, though, is it? <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> um. Give him the answer, Rick. The, the, the answer is there were there were two of triplets. Right. I had another brother. So yeah. do you want to hear the one about the shark in the yeah, swimming go pool? Yeah. Okay. A bloke, just in the swimming trunks, walks into a swimming pool full of man-eating sharks. He walks around for a bit and slowly gets out the other side and he's not bitten or anything. Why not? Because they'd already eaten. No, they're starving hungry. He walked through the water. Yeah. He, wasn't, he wasn't like a, a bridge. No. He actually was in the water, soaking wet, the sharks. He, uh, he had like a metal suit on? No. Naked apart from swimming trunks. Um, there were real sharks. Real sharks. Swimming about. They swimming were, sharks. Man eating, hungry, yeah. They were really hungry. Yeah. This fella gets into the same pool. Yeah. It's the same pool. Exactly. He walks right, he gets in the steps, yeah. he walks down, he walks yeah. across. Yeah. Yeah. He's in the water. Yeah. Up to his neck. Yeah. And the sharks are near him. Yeah, they're attacking him. They're attacking him? They're actually attacking him. But he still gets out, okay. Yeah, walks out the other side. And he's not, hasn't got a mark on him. I don't know. Go on, Rick, what's the answer? Yeah, I was lying about the sharks. <laughs> there weren't any sharks. No, I was lying about the sharks. Completely lying, just made up. <laughs> just an empty pool. <laughs> That's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's our <laughs> point. <laughs> They're rubbish. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. <laughs> oh oh dear. Look at his face. He's so offended. <laughs> oh, offended and confused. Come on, play a song. No, go on then. PJ Harvey on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Steve, Carl. Um, I've got a real one for you. Uh, this is a logic question, not a stupid one. Um, just very quickly. Um. Uh, ten, uh, uh, black balls in a bag and ten white balls in a bag, mm. yeah. How many balls do you have to pull out to ensure you've got a pair of the same colour? Um, well, what's stopping you putting your hand in and pulling out? Oh, Jesus. For, for, um, 
Because I asked for the minimum <laughs> number. So what's- well, how many do you have to pull out to ensure you've got a pair? That doesn't- that doesn't say all of them, that'll right. ensure it. No, what's it, the minimum number you have to pull out? Eleven. Cause you- you- if- if the- Why do you need eleven? What? Because- so there's, no, go on. There's, there's ten black balls, ten yeah. white balls, yeah? Yeah. Say if you're- f for some reason, you pulled out all the ten black balls. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You'd have a pair, wouldn't you? You'd have a pair- After the first two? Yeah. So what's the minimum number you have to pull out to ensure- Two. two. No, cause you might pull a white one and a black one. Yeah, but- I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Sometimes I get that impression, the way you look at me like Helen from Big Brother. Yeah, but- I've always assumed that. Look, right. right. What's the minimum number you have to pull out to ensure you have two of the same colour? Three. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. You can use that one. Yeah. That's a good one. So what's the minimum- what's the minimum number you have to pull out to ensure <laughs> you have four of the same colour? Oh god. Uh, eight. <laughs> Was that I, a guess? I don't know. I understand the first one. We've done it now. Okay. All right. We'll leave we'll it there. It's good. Good. Okay. Um, now, White Van Carl. Uh, th this is uh, yeah. This is where we. <laughs> oh, it's <that's> too much. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd have seen his face, then seen his, his eyebrows all went down while you were doing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> he genuinely looked pained. It's like you're back at school, isn't it? Well, it's, yeah. It's starting to get hard work now. No, okay, we'll just do White Van Carl then. This is all, this is your opinions. You can't be wrong on this, can you? There's no, no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. But so this is where we ask Carl his views on the uh, the big news stories of the week. Basically, we've we've stolen an idea from the Sun newspaper, and um, so this isn't cruel. This program is it? Oh, I don't think so. Picking it's on not, me? It's not, is it? Oh, it's weird because a few people have said, "Oh, you're picking on me." It's, it depends how you look at things. Isn't sure. It? Yeah, but you do do you like it. We- I mean, we can look at it like it's a laugh, <laughs> so yeah. it's not but fun for us. You know we like you, you know you're, you're our favourite- yeah. I'm gonna say thing in the world, but I don't mean that, you know, in a derogatory way. No, no, it's, I'm cool with that. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay, so, uh, your views please on the fact that, uh, attitudes are changing to the possible marriage of Charles and Camilla. Oh, what do you think of that? Um, the- the roars at the moment because the recent tragedies are uh, apparently uh, high in the polls and people are coming around to the idea of Charles and Camilla getting hitched. What's your thought? Um, whatever really. I mean, if they're happy with it. The thing that <laughs> comes out of it most is it just goes to show, right, that there is someone for everyone. Just because, I mean, no disrespect to Camilla, I'm not a good looking person either, but she's a stunner and yet she's gone and picked up a royal. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think it's good for things like that to happen because it cheers you up, do you know what I mean? Uh, gives you a bit of hope. Thanks, Carl. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, you know, if, if they're happy. If any, anyone's happy, it's a good story, innit? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's had a bit of bad luck. And, uh, and now he's, he's got someone else in his life, so. I'm just- while he's doing this, I'm just doing a list of questions to ask him what he thinks of things in the world. Okay. Is that alright? Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, just, no yeah, problem. Okay. Um, okay, what do you, uh, make of- well, now listen, this may be a non-story, or it may be the biggest story that's about to break. Ulrika Johnson and Sven Goren Eriksson's affair. Are you familiar with this? It's over the papers today. Apparently, uh, Ulrika and Sven are going out, although there appears to be no evidence for this. Yeah, I don't even give it time of day. Do you not? Right, right, well done. Doesn't- doesn't affect me whatsoever, as long as he does his job well. Yep. And what's she doing at the moment? Presenting Dog Eat Dog, I think. Right, you know. As long as she does her job well. As long as they both do their jobs well. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, that's going on with a lot of people out in the world, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just cause he's an England boss, as long as, you know, we win the- win the games and that, he's yeah. doing his job. Mm, mm. If she's, you know, gets a dog winning a prize or whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> he was, okay. It's not yeah. worth it, Karen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... <laughs> it's a dog within a prize. I haven't seen Dog Eat Dog. What's okay. it about? It's alright, it's- Right, no, so, go on. so that's it, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. what about this then? Uh, are you, uh, disappointed by the nation that, uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of St. George's Day? 23rd. Is St. George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, that's- Are, you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St. George is the patron saint of England who, uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, mm. like Christmas, or you buy t presents and that for each other, then people will remember it. But there's so many of these days with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> <laughs>
So, <laughs> it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because, you know, people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know, people There'll be like busy. Gareth Gates Day in 50 years' time. It's just weird. I mean, I remember being a kid, right? Going out on a Sunday and shops will be shut mm. because it was like, you know, the day of rest and all that. People don't care now. It's like, oh, we can make some more money, we'll open the shops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's Is that a good or a bad thing, Carl? Uh, it's good because I remember I used to have to get up early to go and get some bread if we didn't have any in. <laughs> Because the shop would only be open for a couple of hours in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Whereas now I'd be able to- Yeah, I remember that. In. I remember that. Shop shop. And you couldn't get aspirin and stuff, exactly. certain things, nightmare yeah. Nightmare on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So- That's right, yeah. And pubs didn't open oh, for 12 today. Do you remember space operas? Yeah. Yeah, shut up. Um, um can I ask you something? Go on. Okay, I've got a little list of things. Um, what do you think of, like, those pug dogs that are bred and they can hardly breathe? It's evil. Yeah. What do you think of, um, uh, gays? Uh, they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like straight people, you get bad ones, you get good ones. Exactly. Hey. We've learned a lesson today, haven't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Let's play a record. Yeah? What do you fancy, a bit of Radiohead? Yeah. <laughs> Why? What do you mean? Yeah. What's up with it? Because what happens, the, the last two weeks have been quite good and we always tend to have two good ones and then one that's just alright. Well, let the listening public be the judge of that. Well, yeah, well, and, and the Sony committee. Yeah, what do you want to do? A, a clip show of the best- we should do that for our last show. People should vote for their <laughs> favourite hilarious link. Yeah. And then we can put it together on a tape, right? Is there a record there that wants to release the- the-, the, the bit like, I love- <laughs> Including such favourites as, do you like gays? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this lad, he had a horse. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I s scored once, I was stung by a bee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and who can forget, that's lovely. Should you do that? Can you, you, have you kept all these on tape? Yeah. So can you do a compilation? Oh, People hard, phone in. Work, no, this, though. the next two weeks, phone in for your favourite clip. Uh, Carl, well, how can they get hold of you, Carl, in the week? What's, what's your, your email? What's your email? Number? What's it's your email? My, it's my name with uh, xfm.co.uk. So, Carl Pilkington. Carl dot Pilkington. Carl with dot- With a K. Carl with a K. Yeah. Carl dot Pilkington at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Vote your favourite link of the last- it's three months, and we, we should make a little compilation and sell it. Mm. And we get like Radiohead, they'd love, they'd love to be on the compilation with us, wouldn't they? Mm. <laughs> wouldn't they? Oh, well. Oh. Anyway. Yeah. Alright, do you know, like, you're always giving me questions in the week, you're always saying things like, <laughs> if I put you in this situation, <laughs> what would you do? Like what? Like, like, like what? Like bizarre things. <laughs> like um, what, though? Say one. If you had to lick... <laughs> Barbara Cartland's face. <laughs> yeah. Would it be the right cheek or the left cheek? <laughs> or Sorry, does Barbara want her face being there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying if she- if that's what she's into, then she's I don't mind dead. popping- She's, she's dead. dead. Yeah. So, isn't, isn't she? she? Isn't she? I don't think just she Just be, be careful, because you can't libel the dead, so I want to make sure she's dead before we start saying horrendous things. But she, I don't know, I don't think she is dead. I'm almost no. she's not. I don't think so. No, she's not. So, is, is Barbara Cartland dead? 08700 800 1234. I'll have to get Chris in. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, right? So so anyway, he always calls up with like bizarre, uh, <laughs> bizarre stuff like that. And mm. I was watching a program the other night about uh, snakes, <laughs> right? And um, it was like, don't walk th through a river that's full of snakes because good work, good advice. They, um, they if you got a kid in the car or in the house, turn yeah. your radio down if if you don't want them to hear stuff like this. But. Uh, yeah, they go for your, uh, for, y for your tackle. Why? I don't know, they just do. They think it's another little snake? Maybe. With... With swollen with cheeks. Earrings. <laughs> with earrings. yeah. So, or, uh, or an anaconda in, uh, in my case. <laughs> with one eye. So, I'm really uh, joking. So yeah, yeah, and I, I said to Ricky, what would you do, right? Well, it's risky. You two in the woods. You, you're having a wandy, Steve. Having a, walk, having a wander. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, you, you walk <laughs> through, you walk through the river. What and, me? And, yeah. Okay. Because you're tall, so it's like you can check out how deep it is before Ricky goes through. Right. Yeah. Which you do, That's you do, do. you do do that yeah. sometimes, don't you? Yeah. But a snake bites <laughs> your tackle. Yeah. Yeah. And say penis. Yeah. It's the correct word for I it, know, it's not offensive. It's, it doesn't sound nice. Say it, say, say yeah. it. Penis, but I don't Oh, you dirty that. little, no, you no. dirty little slut, Carl. You're no, a dirty it's just, little- It's just one of those words. Right, yeah. carry on with the, let's yeah. carry on. What's the story? I'm wandering through a, a river. Yeah, yeah. And, and the snake bites, bites your penis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and- You know, you know Ricky like doesn't leave like <laughs> WC1. <laughs> Why on earth are we going to be anywhere near a river where there's sort of- Well anyway, get snakes. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You are in this situation. Yeah. Okay. 
the snake bites you, and I said to Ricky, if it was a matter of life or death, would you suck out the poison? <laughs> 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 what do you think he said? Uh, oh, and the, and the bit I made, because he was thinking about it, and you know, like, oh god, well he's, you know, he's my best mate and everything, what will I do? And I said, and then, Steve starts sort of groaning like he's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to remember what I did do. What did happen in that instant? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so, <laughs> so I've been bitten, I've been bitten on the penis by a snake. Yeah, there's poison in there's you. There's no poison in it. Yeah. I've had a go at trying to suck it out myself. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you've never mastered that. <laughs> I've never been able to master that. Yeah, yeah. It's just just a long spine and such a short, stubby knob that he's got no chance. Yeah. yeah. So um, what so I have to get. He's even had lip extensions. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go on. And I, and would Ricky suck it out? Almost certainly not. Yeah, that's the answer. Yeah, so you'd let me die. I'd, I'd, I'd just horrible. I'd go. Is there anyone you want to tell? Do you want me to call your mum and dad? Yeah. How should I tell them you died? <laughs> <laughs> is they tell him I died taking a bullet for a lady. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, I was beating up some, yeah, some nasty people. Yeah. Would you at least run into the woods and try and find some kind of animal that could do it uh, for me? I'm, I'm, I'm some <laughs> of those monkeys look like they've got, you know, they've got a good technique. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stop it. One more song. Yeah. Only time for song for the, uh, the what's it? Oh, we gotta share this one then. But we're, we're doing this one. I thought there was two. Can no, we go? we've run out of time. Well, this is for this is in the Guardian because they print oh, my oh. favourite song is "If You See a oh. Sailor." It's "If You See a Sailor." Blah blah blah. Okay. A song for the ladies and lovers. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Stone Rose on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilgrim for the last time. Indeed. I'm afraid. Yes. So, um, you know, we're gonna have a little bit of a chat. We're sewing up some things with Carl. Indeed. We're giving away that, that prize, that BAFTA bag, and, you know. Playing some great music. And we're just, I mean, we're, I'm bringing in my favourite tunes. I'm bringing the Smiths, Radiohead, Cat Stevens, David Bowie, Neil Young, the classic. Steve's doing the same. Indeed. Um, well, Carl. The last time for, uh, yeah, I've, apparently, um, someone's got it a bit wrong. We're not actually away for six weeks. We're away for about, so we'll be back in, uh, August, won't we? What the hell? Yeah. No, don't swear. Yeah, that's outrageous. On the last show, you have to say that. Already brought the tone down. Yeah. Cheapened it. And I think it's blasphemous as well. Yeah, no, it's not. No hell isn't, is it? Isn't it? No, I don't think you've got that's not blasphemy, is it? Taking Hell's name in vain? Yeah. Yeah, but what was it you were saying the other week about the Queen Mum used to have the right mouth on her? What? I don't, I don't think we said that on air, Carl. What? No, no but last week you, you yeah. were saying about ba bad language and I was saying, oh, it, you know, there'll come a time when bad language isn't, you know, doesn't matter anymore. You can F and Jeff and stuff. Oh, I know what he's talking about, Steve. Really? Right, let me explain to you, the listener at home. Um, Carl was worried about swearing and as a joke, off air, it was last week, we were saying that, um, the qu uh, in the 1940s and 50s, the Queen Mum used to say things like, and we were quoting things she'd said, yeah. like, I'm saying, I'm right, but putting F's and C's in there, and you believed us. What, so this whole week you've believed that we somehow, somehow had knowledge that the, the Queen, Queen Mum used, used to, to swear like a trooper? We were doing d fake quotes from her in her voice, but putting in F's and C's, and you believed us. I mean, I didn't even think, I thought you were going along with a joke, but it obviously made a impact. Carl, we've said this, you've got to question and query everything. You can't take things at face value, certainly not if they come out of the mouths of Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, sorry about that, Carl, it was a little, a little trick. Uh. Is there any other things now that, as Is you look back over these said that you've been about that I can tell you now that was a lie? Anything you've maybe queried or questioned, you, you know, you've thought, oh, that doesn't seem right. That maybe Ricky's told you. Something might come to me okay. later on, but... Okay. Well, what about Carl? I mean, it's, we we love you. Right, obviously, we know that. We've, we've, got, we've got great affection for you. We look forward to this. I'm gonna miss you, really, but... And I'll tell you what, you've got a heart of gold. Now, wait till you see what XFM 104.9. Winner of a bronze award at the Sony, at the Sony Radio Awards. The Radio Oscars. So Man Phil alive. Jupiter said. That's what he called him on Liquid I'll, News. I'll tell you this, Rick, I'm not used to being on a table with losers at an award ceremony. No. I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm glad, I didn't want to come in to do the final show. No. You know, no. I went straight over and sat with Pete and Jeff, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I went over Radio to the, uh, 4, I went over with Paul Gambagini. I went over to BBC World Service. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a lot funkier. A lot yeah. Cooler. Won an award. Yeah, won an award. They swept the boards. Yeah. 
I don't. Bronze is nowhere. What was the mood? Uh, what was silver's, the mood here? Silver's. What was the mood here? The mood. Because uh, the day after. Because people. Were, I mean, I, let me tell you that I think XM deserved an award, and I thought it was it was criminal actually. But what I did like about it's quite uh, that we certainly had the room because Pete and Jeff said good luck to us and Christian. That was really nice. And then someone else mentioned it. Ja um, James Nesbitt. James Nesbitt yeah. said uh, uh, XFM and stuff. So yeah. it Paul, certainly Paul had Gamble the. Paul said something about it. Yeah. Did so it's Paul Gamble. Yeah. It certainly had the room, and for a local, you've got to realise it's a local radio station, yeah. you know, and uh, it's it, you, it can't compete really with Radio Two and Radio Four. And but what was the mood uh, the day after here um, at XFM? It was all right. I mean, I think we expected a few more, but, but you shouldn't take this thing seriously anyway. No. But, what I, yeah, but what I didn't, but what I didn't never realize, take Rick, awards seriously. But what I didn't realise is you have to pay thousands of pounds just to nominate. Just You're to joking. get just to get into the running for an award, so you've already you know they've squandered thousands of pounds. No, just it's not thousands. It is. is it? Well, it, it mounts up because you pay for it to enter, and right? then the table. You've got to buy like mini discs and that to send your stuff in on. Which sure. Ends up with Sony mini discs. Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying, Carl. I'm not saying anything. No. Um, and also, then you've got to pay for the table, right? And and the food and the drink. I mean, it's a few grand. I swore on live television as well that night. Yeah, but I've never done that before. I mean, I've never, I've sworn before, and, but, but never accidentally. And we, we were being interviewed for, um, and Christian was sort of like, quite, you know, being a bit boisterous, and he must have brought out the worst of me, and I actually just accidentally said the F word, and I apologised straight away. I didn't want to embarrass Phil Jupus. <laughs> he was doing a good he job. He himself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I was thinking about yesterday, and you're saying a bronze isn't worth having, right? Yeah. But, so <laughs> like... We're only joking, no, no, none of them are worth having, but they're very nice. No, very nice no, to no, bronze is pointless. <laughs> But you say that, cos like, <coughs> bron bronze is like coming last, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you tell me the name of the person who won the marathon this year? No. Yeah, but that's cos we're not sporty. But I'm listen. sure there's lots that can. But yeah. then, the guy who came last, who was in the swimsuit, <laughs> people <laughs> remember him. And no, I don't remember his name either. No, what's his name? No, no, but he was six days late. I mean, he was really Yeah, but what's his name then? Uh, you see, well, no one's remembering either. No, but if someone said who won the marathon, I'd go, I don't know, but there was that guy in the swimsuit. Well, I'd say, I don't know, it was a woman. Yeah. She had, she had shorts on and trainers. I'm just trying to make My point is, what they will remember <laughs> is that we were losers. That's what they remember. <laughs> they may not remember our names. Yeah. They're just point and shout losers. We're all winners, aren't we? We're all winners, really. For taking part, sure. Well, yeah. And it's all subjective as well, isn't it? Go on. I mean, I'm not going to moan about awards because you've won a lot of them. It's like saying they don't mean Jack. But yeah. at the end of the day, right, there's some shows that won awards and you go, yeah, that, that's, you know, that's worth an award. I, got, I, th I think you've got to treat it, I mean, some awards actually boost your profile or career or your cachet or anything like that. Some it's just a nice night out when it's nice to win, but I don't think you should really take any award that seriously. What worries me though, Rick, as I mentioned on the night, is that I, when I was at school, was, I mean, I, you look at me now, you probably think he's an athletic kind of guy, he's a sporty dude, you know, but at school, bizarrely, that was not the case. No, what were you, I a bit of a lanky bean <laughs> <with> <laughs> It the turns out. Yeah. You're joking. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, uh, but, and yet I got a silver, uh, in the high jump. Yeah. And I've done better in the high jump, right? Did no training whatsoever, did yeah. no practice, just turned up. You were two and a half foot taller than every other well, person in your class. Yeah, but wait a minute, people think that if you're tall, that makes you easier, it makes it easier for you to do the high jump. Surely not, because I've got all that leg to get over the pole. That don't, makes it harder, harder for me, surely. Don't talk rubbish. What are you talking about? Well, of course the taller you are, the more chance you got at the high jump. <laughs> well, explain Everything that to me. Any... Oh, what, uh, are you, okay then. So, is it harder for a six foot man to step over a matchbox or a baby midget? A baby midget? <laughs> that is <laughs> tiny, Rick. Hang on. <laughs> Here's something I've learned, remember? Go Going on. Back to like show four or whatever. Go on. What show is it? four? The flea can jump over the London Eye. No! No, it yeah. can jump the equivalent of if it was a six foot man. It can jump about six inches high. A flea cannot jump over the London Eye. Y yes, it can. Yeah, it can. And <laughs> T tell tell, tell your kids that. Carl. Oh. I remember. Oh, a flea can jump over the London Eye. And an ant can lift <laughs> three Volvos. <laughs> but, you're, <laughs> but you're talking about fitness people and that. Remember when we were in the pub, right? Yeah. And um, your mate Johnny was in there. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. And he was talking about that guy who got done, right? Because he entered a wheelchair race. Yeah. And, he sh and there was nothing wrong with him. His legs were all right. Yeah. yeah. Now, he got done because he shouldn't have been involved in it. Yeah. But don't you think that really he's really good for doing that because he's not normally in a wheelchair. Sure. So he's not used to how they move about. Yeah. His arms aren't as strong as the other fellas who are always in yeah. the wheelchair. Sure. He had his mate pushing him. That was Surely. the problem. <laughs> yeah, it was motorised. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'd give him a gold plus. Just, just 
uh, you know, you're taking a bloke who's not used to doing something, he does it the first time and beats the people who are at it. What well, about that woman, though, that was disqualified in the shooting, because she was in a wheelchair and she was just in the normal, uh, able-bodied Olympics, it was just, you know, she ended right, but she wasn't allowed to rest her elbow on the arm of her chair. Because I was saying it's an advantage. She was in a wheelchair and she's shooting, but she was getting unfair advantage. And I said, you you cannot put your elbow on the arm of your Sneaky, wheelchair. aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Do you want to play a Some uh, of them aren't even disabled, it turns out. <laughs> Hold on, though. We're talking about athletes, aren't we? What record should we play next? I'd love to hear that, that single that was out a couple athlete. of months back by athlete. athlete. Let's have athlete. athlete. Played by athlete, a track that I know you and I have enjoyed. Yeah, it was one of our favourite new tracks of the year, that one. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. More, more of our favourite tracks to come on XFM 104.9. You know me, Mitch and Bays, and you. Steve Merchant. And, uh, Carl Perkinson. Sure, go on. Uh, you know, I was mentioning Shoot. the high jump. That yeah. high jump. Uh, do you know the reason I didn't get the gold? It's quite, it's faintly embarrassing because the guy was, it was just neck and neck, me and another guy. In fact, he was slightly shorter than I was. And I was using the traditional Fosby flop. Is it the Fosby flop? Fosby flop. Fosby flop. And, um, and he was using a method which I can only describe as the Superman where he was running at the bar <laughs> and diving head first over it. I've never seen this technique before. It's illegal. That's, that's incredible. Is it not yeah. allowed? The Fosby flop only works because his shoulder and that uh, are going over before his head. Right. That's, that's how they got around the wall. You weren't allowed to right. dive over because it was Obviously no one monitoring that. Yeah. No Just one the game teacher's having a quick fag. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was his name again? The, the, the yeah. The fag. <laughs> uh, I think his name was Mr. Woodbine. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but, uh, he, um, Anyway, so he's using this method, right, and, and it gets neck and neck, and uh, I don't know how many chances you get to not bend the bar, but anyway, it got to the point where basically I had to get over the bar, or right. I was going to come second. Sure. And I decided at that point to use his method, because <laughs> he seemed to be doing so well with it, I thought, well, I'll try that then, that looks oh, easy. Oh, dear. And ran at the bar, launched, didn't actually get my feet off the ground, just hit the bar like I was someone finishing a, a race, you know. Did the you like. have- It was so pathetic, it just got everywhere. everywhere. I just want to get this picture of, of you at the age of what, 15, 16? Yeah. Yeah. Six foot five already, probably? Yeah, probably, yeah, uh, yeah. probably what, about nine stone? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did you have your glasses on? <laughs> of course I did. Th you must have looked pretty and probably, sexy. Probably a small bum fluff tash. Yeah. Yeah. As well. That must have been good. That was was good it true looking. once, when you were about 16, you decided to wear a dicky bow to school? Yeah. That yeah. must have been great. That was during my PG Wodehouse phase. <laughs> 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 you thought yeah. you'd be a hit with the ladies if I you were thought, more sophisticated. Well, not only that, I thought it'd make me kind of kooky and eccentric. Yeah. Like I wasn't already. <laughs> Six foot seven, <laughs> yeah. god lied. Yeah. <laughs> like they're not already thinking there goes a weirdo. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. a weirdo yeah. with a bow tie. Yeah. Brilliant. Does it spin round, mate? Yeah, what Because you're getting me hot. <laughs> exactly. Oh, dear. Yeah, I wore that for about, um, for about six months and it was in school colours. Because we had to wear a tie, it's a school colour, this a bow tie. I mean, now I don't, oh, man. I can't believe it. I don't it. know what I was Carl, uh, when you were, um, uh, a little Pilkington, right, what, what was, if you had hair, what would it be like? What do you mean? <laughs> well, you obviously had hair then, back then. What was the, uh, style? Um, it was like, uh, sort of, I had, I had quite sort of, uh, <laughs> fine, uh, sort of straight hair. Yeah. Right. Um, hairdresser once said to me, you've got hair of a Chinaman. <laughs> He was a wise man, wasn't he? <laughs> what do you think that meant then? Oh! He just said, he, he just said you got the same hair as, as a Chinese man has. Very straight, <laughs> quite fine. Um, why is, why is he telling you? I just imagine this bar going, oh, the answer is well, didn't it, sir? <laughs> do, 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 do. Should I have something on that? You got that, you have the hair of a China man. <laughs> I'm sorry, nothing. <laughs> You're not the spy. No, I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Oh, yeah, was, you're not my like Yeah, lovely. You have the feet of a fish. I'm sorry, nothing. It's not you. Okay, next. <laughs> you have the hair of a Chinaman. It was, what, it was one of those barbers, um, it was a cheap one, just on a, on a railway bridge. I don't believe that. Go on. It was on a like railway that. bridge? <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was cheap. It was very low rent, so he could charge. That wasn't a barber. Bit. That was a man with some scissors. <laughs> yeah. Did you get all? Oh, have to move you there, sir. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back in the chair, sir. <laughs> no, I mentioned them on one of those things you always see in old films where you've got you to have to pump it up and down, down again, yeah, like a seesaw. Yeah. That's, That's not as good as that. It was just a normal chair, little wooden hut, and <laughs> it did have to stop when a train came past because it used to. <laughs> well, because he had to change the signal. <laughs> Just making a few extra bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love That's that. That's Manchester for you. Oh, I, God. I, I always oh, it wasn't him. Bernard Cribbins, was it? <laughs> I always remember him saying, do you want your hair washing? 
And I said, uh, is it free? You know, does it come with it? And he said, yeah. <laughs> so I said, oh, go on then. He said, hang on now, I'll just have to wash these mugs up. <laughs> he had like a sink full of mugs. Oh, God. He said, I'll God. just take these out and then I can wash your head. <laughs> oh, no. <And> that's <laughs> why. Why did you go to this man? <laughs> it was cheap. It was How like much was it? About two quid. And when was this? Uh, God. At eighty, eighty eight, eighty nine. 89. All right. Yeah. So what happened to your, uh, your Chinese hair? Uh, when did it start coming out? You have, you have the hair of a bald Chinaman now, yeah. don't you? <laughs> You've got the hair of a Chinaman in a box now. <laughs> 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 oh. I used to just, um, work, work a lot of hours, and I think- <laughs> That's what made it fall out. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, it's, it's not. Work. It's genetic. You can't stop it. It's not it, genetic. Of course it is. Is old? Uh, no, it's, um, it's got more hair than me now, I think. Is your mum? Uh, Kojak's got more hair than you, Carl. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> don't have a go at Carl's hair. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> oh, look at his little what, face. What did he say before in that book about going bald? It said, uh, it had a little tip, didn't it? We'll, we'll go over them later. Oh, it says, uh, if you're going thin, doesn't it say, um, cut your hair short and something like so that? So it makes you look thicker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we got, um, people are offering Carl lots of, we're, we're coming up to that in yeah, a well, few Yeah, we'll get to that, sorry, obviously we, uh, win that BAFTA bag. Shall I remind people what the competition was? Yeah. Um, last week we, uh, were giving away this bag that we got signed by various celebrities at the BAFTAs, and, uh, we asked you to, uh, email or, uh, write in with your suggestions as to what you have that you could swap for the bag, and it has to be something that will enhance Carl's life. We've had quite a, a lot of, uh, suggestions, I'll go through those a bit later, but they're, um, some of them are quite eccentric. Meanwhile, I'm gonna play one of my favourite songs off one of my favourite albums. I look forward to hearing it. It's Radiohead, it's the Benz, and this is Black Star. Go for it. Absolutely. Sorry about that, we've, we'll miss it, we, we, we can't avoid it really, we've got to go away and do some filming. And, uh, they're only gonna miss you anyway, Carl. They can do without us now. Zoe yeah. Ball's on. Yeah, Zoe Ball. And who else is after her? She's not doing the whole run, is she? Um, yeah, I think so. Is she doing the whole, the, the whole yeah. three months, is she? Yeah. Tell her not to get too comfortable. Uh-huh. Right? And, her feet, and don't let Big Boy Slim come in with her, because he mixes up the records, doesn't he? And ruins them. Yeah. Hey, it's talking of DJing. Go on. You know, I did that storming set the other night, well, uh, yeah. for XFM. Yeah, sure, yeah. Go on. Uh, this was down at a little club, in case you weren't aware of it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I went to the, uh, Sony's the other night. Yeah. Carl Pilkington, uh, sidles up to me. Yeah. Slips me an envelope. Go on. Oh, 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 200 big ones in there. Did he get paid cash for that? Yeah. 200 did bones! Taxman won't know about that. Cash in hand. No, the tax won't know, because I mean, obviously no one who ever works in tax is listening to local radio. Oh. Yeah. Well, so... No, the tax man will know about it. Yeah. Because I'll declare it. I, I would. Put it, yeah, it's going straight down. I'll do it when I get home. <laughs> do it when I get in later on. And don't write off rubbish that you buy anyway, like, you know. No, yeah. I won't. No. I'll do it all above board, officially. <laughs> it all incorrectly, and so I'll send it now, I'll send it tomorrow, so that you get it early, so it's not too busy oh. for you, sir. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, also, uh, did you see, uh, Liquid News last night? No. It what is a, Liquid News? I don't really watch it. It's Liquid the thing news. on, um, um, Choice, right, and it's, uh, sort of celebrity news, yeah? And, um, uh, Julian Clary, uh, was on, and, uh, they were talking about the Sony Awards the night before, which we went to, and they said, uh, something like, um, a relatively unknown had won the entertainment award that we were up for on Chris Chern and Chris Moyles and Jonathan Ross said that, um, uh, uh, beating off bigger people, not he was beating off bigger people, <laughs> they weren't suggesting he was- Was Julian <laughs> Clary beating off other people? <laughs> yeah. Um, and it said, so, uh, the people who didn't win resorted to silliness and it cut, right, them, I don't know where the camera was, it must have been miles away because it wasn't us, cut to me making a little hat for you out of a Budweiser box, a little dark thing, and then forcing it on your head and you sort of struggling, do you remember that? I do remember it. Yeah. Th so th they were- They're always well, watching. They were filming us. They were filming it, yeah. Scary. So, yeah. That's really scary because some of the things we were doing- Because I was tying scarves around your head, wasn't I? We were, we were, uh, we, we were touching Carl we in an intimate way. We were gaining him up. Gaining him up. To make what him feel all uncomfortable and everything. Cause he doesn't like that sort of thing, do ya? Can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be giving you a cuddle about five to three, seriously. Yeah, we are gonna be On the way out. And I've got roaming hands. Yeah. Do you know them girls who came up from the radio academy and sort of said, oh, so you're Carl then? Right, yeah. yeah. A couple of fans yes. went up to Carl. Yeah. Uh, just, just on the way out, I said to him again, I said, look, I'm not gay. <laughs> because they were convinced I was. Yeah, that's because they, we, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we, we teased Carl that he had to go as Steve's partner, and um, to the BAFTAs, and they really meant partners. You know, after the show, 
when he was walking around, he was going to go buy his suit, I actually said, they will, they will ask you. He went, well, what if they say, and they, uh, as we walk in, Steve Merchant and his boyfriend, Carl, uh, well, they might say that as you walk in, they might overdub it on the television, so, he's going, well, what about my mates in Manchester? <laughs> and he said, I'm not going. <laughs> The risk of someone in Manchester thinking, thinking that he was going good. out with you, mind you, it wasn't, it was probably right, going, wow, well, uh, if he was gonna see where you're going no, if with you, If you were gonna be gay, you wouldn't choose Steve, would you? No. Who would you, who would you choose if you were gay? Uh, if you could go out with any bloke, who would it, who would it be? That? That's a good one. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. He's thought about it before. Go on. No, 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 of course not. No, no, no. no, who would it be? Who, 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 if, you know, if you were gay, what bloke would you go out with? God, probably, uh, Jonathan Ross is alright. You gay! Oh, you, you oh, fancy Jonathan Ross, you bender! Oh, oh bender! Rossi! Oh, 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 you've got his Jonathan. number, haven't you? We should get oh, contact. I love you, Jonathan, you! Come right with me, David Bowie, off, uh, Diamond Dogs. Another one of my favourite tracks. Cracking. Great track, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's time for, um, Carl's Room 101. Carl was too shy to obviously ever do this for real. But, um, we thought that end, end the, uh, the run of this with, uh, things that Carl hates. Yeah. We, we, we know the thing he likes, we know the- so, uh, Carl, okay. oh, We should just point out that we've, uh, been inspired by the TV show Room 101. We didn't come up with this ourselves. Uh, yeah, we did. <laughs> this is Room 102. <laughs> yeah, we'll be Paul Merton, and you be Carl Pilkington. Right. right. You could <clears> chance <throat> to banish to Room 101 all those things that you dislike, never, they're never to be seen again. Will you please welcome Carl Pilkington? Right. Who? Oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carl. So, what's your first? What does this represent? And imagine me putting some on a right. on the table next year. Go on. Right. Well, first of all, right, it's dead hard to come up with like five things that drive you up the wall. Okay. Right. It's not easy because there's so many things. Yeah. But it's just like you know, picking five. It's like someone saying, pick your five favorite records or five favorite films. Yeah. Sure. It's hard. So. You know in Desert Island Discs where they, you, you always get the complete works of Shakespeare in the Bible? Yeah. I think you should include Ricky Gervais. I think you should always be there already <laughs> in Room 101. They don't have to nominate you. <laughs> you, all, you always go in. <laughs> <laughs> go on then, go on then. Right, go on. So, so don't bother putting him in. Don't bother putting Ricky in, Carl. He's already yeah, there. He's already, I'm already there, waiting. Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> right. Yeah. First of all, right, I thought, I thought of like, uh, things that we've done in the past. Sure. And like quotes and that, that you yeah. were talking about. Yeah. That, that, that quote that people say that, uh, you know, money doesn't make you happy. Yeah. Right, we're just, we're just rattling through some here. Yeah. That, that annoys me. What? Money well, the quote, money doesn't make you happy. Yeah, cause what? it does, it clearly does. <laughs> 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 right. W without it, life's pretty dull, isn't it? Yeah, good. Right, so, okay. so that's like a little short, short thing and, and, <laughs> you know, then, then that sort of makes you think about people with money. There was yeah. a program on in the week, I don't know if you saw it. Steve, the, the one, uh, posh loaded. That was brilliant, wasn't it? That was great show. So annoying. Oh, yeah. There was a girl on there, right, who's from a, from a rich family and that. And, uh, you know, it's not her fault she's from a rich family. No. It's like how posh people annoy people. That doesn't annoy me because the way I sound is because of where I'm brought up and that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you, if you sound posh, you sound posh. It's, yeah. You know, it doesn't change who's a person or whatever. Yeah, it's quite But true. this girl, right, um, did you see it, Steve? I did. You didn't see it, I did you, Ricky, right? This girl goes shopping, she buys like four t-shirts and a crappy little handbag. Yeah. Spends about thirteen hundred quid. And she's just wasting it going, you know, the woman's saying, uh, oh you'll love these, you know, they're really in fashion. She said, oh whatever, I'll probably only wear them once anyway. And it's just, that sort of thing annoys me. Yeah. You know, people with money, you know, who have grafted for it, are good. But like, um, you know, people who, who just get money given to them from the rich parents trying to move the world. There was another point, right, where she's in a shoe shop, right, and, um, she, she's like, got these big boots and stuff. <laughs> uh, but part of the problem is, right, she's quite odd looking in that, right, <laughs> but she's got a lot of money so she makes herself look half decent. Yeah. <laughs> problem is, <laughs> she's got fat ankles. She's got what? Fat ankles. Right. And they drive her up the wall because no matter, I mean, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's almost like God has gone, yeah, you can have all the toffees and stuff you want, you can have like your nice t-shirts, but at the end of the day, love, you're stuck with these ankles and you can see- <laughs> I love the 
<laughs> I do, for God's sake. <laughs> right, you can have all the toffees you want. Yeah. And you have nice handbags and that, but you're stuck with these ankles. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and I really wanted to get a job in that shoe shop where she was going in, blowing her dad's money, and she was calling up her dad saying, oh, daddy, is it all right if, uh, you know, I'm just out shopping, I've just bought some shoes that, that have cost like a grand, mm. and I really wanted a, a job in that shoe shop, just so I could sit there, and when she comes in, you go, oh, hello, love, whatever her name is, lovely to see you here again. Got some lovely new shoes in. Got look at these nice new boots. Everyone's wearing them. Victoria Beckham, and you know all the it girls are wearing them. Yeah, I try them on. Oh, you can't because your ankles are so fat. <laughs> you can't get into these. <laughs> Never mind. Here's some boots. <laughs> she really annoyed me, and I'm not a nasty person. You're but not. She she brought it out of me. Oh, oh I'm worried though. This idea of you getting a job in a shoe shop. I'm I not know. sure you're qualified. <laughs> I like all the, the, that's way round it, that yeah. some people go, oh, I'd like her to lose all her money or something. He'd like to actually yeah. rather go through getting the job in the shop, yeah. and then just wait in there. You'd be too busy mucking around outside, like, on some kind of trolley stuck in a little lake. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> But interestingly in that show, I was watching that show, and at one point, um, you mentioned that her fat heels or her fat ankles. Yeah. Um, her, her, she said, I'd like to do, I'd like to have various changes to my body, I know, plastic surgery, I'd like to do this to my face, and da 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 da. And, uh, her mum's there, and her mum's going, no, don't be so, that's how, no, you're my daughter, you're beautiful, da 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 da. No, you shouldn't, I'm not gonna let you have those, da da da. She went, I'd love to have an operation on my fat ankles. Her mum went, yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of a mother does that? <laughs> oh, how bad can fat ankles be? I know. What were these ankles like? Well, tell us, Rick, like, you must know. No, <laughs> no they, do you know what I mean? They were like, if you said to a little kid, to a four-year-old kid, draw a person, that's, they'd draw her legs. Do you know where there's no sort of thin bit, and then it comes out a bit for your knees? Oh, and yeah, and then just ankles. It was just like two logs. People going to say, I like your new flares. What do you mean flares? They're <laughs> leggings. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> Awful, oh. so, you know. So, okay, so you're putting in f posh girls with fat ankles. Yeah. yeah okay, well, let's watch the next one, I'm in 101. Right, another quick one, really. Um, people in supermarkets. <laughs> <laughs> right. What, the people um, who serve? Yeah. Ma it's mainly, um, these, these shops you get around in London that are like open 24 hours, right? Yeah. You'll go in and you'll buy your, uh, your, you know, you don't do your main shop there, it's mainly just little bits in it, your, yeah. your carton of milk and uh, sure. maybe a loaf, a couple of balm yeah. cakes and that. Yeah. And you go in there. <laughs> Who still buys balm cakes? <laughs> right? Do they have them in yeah, London? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you ever That's ask? Would you be annoyed if I said balm cakes? We don't have those down here, they're rubbish. That's <laughs> happened before when I asked for gravy and they didn't know what gravy was. <laughs> In a chippy. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you say? Have you got any gravy? Uh, just, just because you, you do, you, up north you have chips and pie and gravy on it. And yeah. they didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Right, okay. So that, that annoys me actually, stick that on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, You've got fish men up north. But, but listen, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, we saw a sign in the north, right? It was a little shop and the sign said, we sell bread. <laughs> it was it was handwritten. It was like there was probably like a rush with those people in <laughs> exactly. turbans going. Uh, What's this bread got... you talk of? Yeah, little little <laughs> headscarves. Little women running down with their little. Oh, <laughs> but anyway, these shops, right? So you go in there getting your stuff, and you'll go up to the till, and they don't say hello to you. They they don't sort of smile. They just bleep the stuff through. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you how much it is. They just sort of. Expect you to look at the till to see how much it is. Yeah. You can get your hand in your pocket, give them the money, they'll give you the change, and they won't say goodbye. Yeah. So yeah. It's like they just can't be asked so. to have any sort of hello, how are you doing? Yeah. I don't. I don't want a big chat. I don't want to know what they're getting up to and sure. what you know what the dad does for a living and all that. I just want <laughs> like, how are you doing? You know, you're well. Right. Uh, oh yeah, this, this spreads you know, popular or whatever. Uh, right, that'll be <laughs> five pounds. You, you need to keep a breast of which bread you're selling well. <laughs> oh, Mother's Pride, that's a good choice. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, so, seventy seventy percent of our whole last stock is worth it. So, that really, you know, even though, you know, it is a 24-hour I'll hour be shop. honest, I, 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 I would err on the side of silence. Not, not rudeness, I hate rudeness if I do that, but I, I, I would rather, um, I'd start to go, uh, one pound fifty please, and that'll be fine for me. Any more? What about, uh, hello and goodbye, have a good day? Not in an American way. It doesn't way. bother me. I've got, I mean, I, I prefer people who say have a nice day and and don't mean it to people who don't say it at all and don't mean it. To be honest, I, I'm, I'm I, I don't worry about that mock sincerity because I, th I think it. No, no, it, no, it no does it's just job. normal, yeah. isn't it? No, like, no, I, I mean, I, I'm saying I don't, I don't I, I like people who say I don't care. They say oh, nice to see you. Come again. Have a nice day. It doesn't bother me. But a chat. I, I hate people who think they're the life and soul. No, 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 no. I don't, don't mean like that. I mean like nuts. you know, if you go through a door, you hold it open, you go there, you go. You know what I mean? You yeah. expect a thank you. 
Yeah. That's yeah. That's all. Yeah, and, and also when- when do you come in at the, uh, like a narrow walkway and you're both walking there and, uh, I start walking out of the way and they tut like, I should have. I want to go, hold on, look, we're both in the same boat here. Yeah. Why is it me- uh, that- that annoys me, where people just oh, think they, when they're in the wrong. they own the street, or <sighs> if, if- if two people aren't looking where they're going, it's one yeah. person's fault. Yeah. That really annoys me, yeah. yeah. So Sorry. that- so that's it, really. I mean, I know the 24-hour shops and they're knackered and stuff, but politeness, just to say- Well, it costs right. nothing, does it? No. So, so those are your little quick ones, then we get on to your, your big three, don't we? The big ones. Yeah, Should we play a record and come back to that? I well, know what you want. I'm, I'm talking to Carl Pilkington on room, room 101 on XFM 104.9. What? XFM 104.9. What, what did you want to say? Doesn't matter, Carl. It doesn't, it the really point doesn't is, it could have been important, it could have been a fire yeah, you, or anything. When, when we shout anything, you jump. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Come on, Carl. All right. Get with the programme, all right? Hey? Right, what other things do you want to yes, room 101? Uh, uh, <laughs> Other than us, spiders. Right, go on. I, I know Ricky will yeah, be agreeing with yeah. you. Yeah, all, all, all spiders. Yeah, just I mean not all spiders because there's some spiders that are on the planet that don't do any harm. Uh, <laughs> they clean up stuff, don't they? I <laughs> <laughs> got a little brush. <laughs> you mean like janitor spiders? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, there's some that you know, <laughs> Hong Kong leggy. Just, just yeah. clean with stuff. But I'm talking about the spiders that are deadly. Right. And, uh, and spiders that are massive. I mean, Johnny's mate, uh, Ricky's mate, Johnny, I mean. Yeah. He was talking about how, uh, he was in Australia. Yeah. And he was sharing a, a room with, with a mate or whatever. And his mate was having a shower. And said, uh, Johnny, just, just come in here a minute. And he, he went in, and there was a spider on the side of the bath that he said was the size of your hand. Two yeah. hands width. It's sort of like size of just like eight inches across. Um, was... That big, right? And the daft thing with that one is that that can't kill you. It's massive. It's got no purpose. The so huntsman. Yeah, but what? Uh, uh, something you said it does, right? If you sort of walk around it and it and it thinks you're going to try and trap it, it it hisses at you and jumps at you and jumps on you and sort of clings on. That's you'd be, terrifying. You'd be sort of running around trying to get it off and it's just gripping on like the old stag beetle thing yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> it's clinging onto you. <laughs> but there is no what I don't understand is why is that spider that big? <laughs> right. Because no doubt it, it uh, only eats stuff like normal spiders do, but it needs to eat more of them because it's it's a bigger lad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't actually do anything. It's not like I just- I just don't Doesn't create, doesn't paint, doesn't do yeah, anything. Yeah, it's just getting in the way and it's one of those things that <laughs> are so big you couldn't kill it. Cause can you imagine like the mess that yeah. would make something that size if you stamped on it? Yeah. Which I'm not, you know, again, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't get that. And then there was a program on a few weeks ago on BBC about spiders. And there was this one, right, it was going, you know, there's so many spiders in the world. And apparently there's so many of them they can't give them all names. Right? What they're saying is, once one dies out, they'll actually introduce another one. Because there's so many different breeds of them that it's impossible to sort of up make a book and list them all. Right. Well, it's like the book would be infinitely long. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a queue. They they're say, not right. trying to name an individually, are they? No, no, no. That's their problem. <laughs> no, so yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just keep it down ziggy. to the species. Go this on. Is, this is true. Though. Go on, yeah. So, so they'll sort of go the, you know, the it gives a spider the Black Widow, right? Black Widow. They've all died. So uh, who's next? And they'll say, "Here's a red back." Yeah. And that's <laughs> that's how they introduce them. So this program was going on about this. <laughs> right? No, they do do it. Okay. <laughs> Your point, okay, right. right? So anyway, there's this little one, right, in Australia, and it shows you some kids being dead happy and playing around in the sun, loving it, you know, all healthy and that, and, you know, love being in the sun, they're playing around the pool and, you know, there's a couple of them there playing swing ball and that, dead happy, not a care in the world, and, like, the one of them goes, oh, I'll go swimming, because yeah. I've been playing swing ball for an hour, got a bit of a sweat, Sure, go for a little uh, breaststroke or whatever, and uh, they, they get in the, in the pool, and they can't wait to have a swim about, and then it pans to the bottom of the pool. Yeah. And there's this little spider just sat there dead still, right? Sat at the bottom of the pool holding its breath. <laughs> holding its breath! Okay. <laughs> ah! Cheeks going up red, yeah, eyes bulging. Yeah, yeah. Oh, eight pairs of goggles on. <laughs> One goes by with a snorkel, you can <laughs> <of> this. <laughs> Four pairs of flippers. Yeah. 
Oh. He, he sat there in the deep end, right? And it's, and like, he, and then it pans back to the kids having a good time, chucking a ball to each other. Yeah. Mm. I can see what's gonna happen here. And it pans back. <laughs> it's not gonna join in the game, is it? <laughs> no. And what happens is, the kid starts bouncing up and down on the floor. Sure. Goes and sticks its, uh, the kid goes and puts a foot on the spider. <laughs> Bites the kid, and apparently, if you're not seen to, you can be dead in 15 minutes. Sorry, well, sorry, why does this spider sit at the bottom of the pool? That's what it likes to do. <laughs> Animals don't do things they like to do. <laughs> Animals do things for a reason. Waiting for a kid to come along. So <laughs> <laughs> no! It doesn't make any sense! It doesn't make any sense. Well, it, that's, that's what it's it not, does. It's not, it doesn't go out to murder kids. That's, <laughs> not, it's, that's not what it does. No, there must be a reason. It's to, to, I mean, if you just stopped when you watch these programs and don't get involved with the music <laughs> and like, you know, the odd, why does it sit at the bottom of the pool? There must be a reason. It either goes there for protection, food, to call, it does it for a reason. It doesn't go there to wind up swimmers. Yeah. There uh, must be a reason this, is it, t uh, if anyone's watching, please, if you're watching that program, I don't know, I don't know about this spider. What, what, what's the name of the spider? I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, it, it oh, say... eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, Is it four. the Duncan Goodhue? <laughs> <laughs> is it, is, is it Paul? I mean, I don't know, maybe it does go into other things like ponds and that, and maybe it does the same for ducks, if a duck stands on it. But why? <laughs> <laughs> stands on it! Uh, oh, I love your brain! Probably because, it, eventually, uh, you know, a kid can get, like, saved if it's, if it's seen to in 15 minutes, but a duck is just gonna, like, wander around and go, God, I don't feel well and what have you. And it, <laughs> and it, what good is that to the spider? Because... No, I'm saying, it might kill it if it might protect itself, but it must be in the pond for a reason in the first place, or the swimming pool. It must be down there for a reason. It must have, Can it we, must have another agenda, evolutionary wise. It can't just do it. Could it be in training for the Olympics? <laughs> Unless it is just cooling. Like, like those, um, cause on, on one of the other programs that, that's a bit mental. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that one, yeah. The one, the one with the lizards. <laughs> with the well, let's not get into lizards. This could okay, take. No, go on, no, no, this is a good one. It was, it was a program, BBC program again, on how insects and animals help each other out. Yeah. Right? They were saying how, you know, you might think they're in an insect, but they think like humans do, yeah. and they all help each other out, <laughs> right? And there was this this lizard that um, is running about in the desert, right? <laughs> and it's going, God, it's roasting. And what it does, <laughs> it it makes a little <laughs> hole in the sand, <laughs> and it goes under the ground and it cools down, right? Yeah. And then you see one of the locals. I think it was in in Egypt or something, and the Egypt bloke comes walking along. <laughs> the Egypt yeah. bloke. And uh, <laughs> is he walking like an Egypt bloke? <laughs> Yeah, walk what? like an Egypt bloke. <laughs> 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 and, and what uh, he does, right, he, he's looking out for these holes in the ground. Sure. And he sticks his hand in. Yeah. And he Why does he want the lizard? He, he makes shoes and stuff out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? And you see, Cobblers. you see him walking around, he's got about twelve of these things in a basket on his back, and they're yeah. all looking really fed up. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. And it's dead hot, and they can't be bothered trying to escape, and they look really fed up. And this bloke's laughing, you know, he's collecting loads. I love how he watches this, like, because they sort of uh, editorialise it and make it into, like, some exactly. sort of, like, evil play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no. but, then, <laughs> but then it was saying how this deadly scorpion that man is scared of is mates with the lizard. <laughs> And the reason is that the scorpion <laughs> goes into the hole, right? It can't dig its own hole because its arms are that big and it's awkward for it to dig to dig a proper hole. Sure. So what it does, it goes into the, the, the like the little den that the lizards made, right? And um, whilst the lizards having a kip, the scorpion says, I'll "Tell you what, I'll do you the deal. You have a kip. <laughs> I'll walk up and down this hole here and, and, and sort of scare away any people." So the lizards like, "Yeah, all right then." Fair enough, because the scorpion wants a little hole to keep out of the sun, the lizard wants a kip, they've done themselves a little deal, the Egyptian bloke comes walking along, sticks his hand in the hole, yeah. he thinks he's just gonna get a lizard, scorpion stings him, he runs off, drops the basket, all the lizards go running off. I love the fact that that is what, what always happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah, feel yeah. that just by chance, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's what always happens. I like the fact that the, the Egyptian bloke, uh, has done this every day, he does it, he goes, well, okay, I've got all these lizards, um, I'll just go to this hole again. Yeah. Because I haven't got that lizard yet, yeah. this would be fine. No, I just, I, I just think- And yeah. when the, when the lizard and the scorpion make that deal, and he says, you have a kip, yeah. and the other one does it, do they talk in Egypt, or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so they talk Egypt how do they, how do they discuss they talk Egypt bloke or this? English bloke? 
What language do they use, Carl? Uh, no, it's the, but it's the international language of love. But spi yeah. spiders is what you're putting in Room 101. Spiders. Let's go back to that. Spiders, so, so spiders, spiders that- so Basically, spiders that have got the poison to kill a man. Because Rick, I know, because you're- Okay. But Rick, I know what you're- What about the ones that are just too big for their own good? They, all those I don't them. understand that either. But Rick, <laughs> but yeah. Rick you're-, you're you're scared of all spiders, aren't you? Yeah. Even the little tiny ones you find. I don't like any spiders, yeah. Is, is your husband afraid of them as well? <laughs> <laughs> um, Carl just had a, a funny phone call, didn't you? From someone who's telling you all about the, the little brown, it's called, is it? Little brown, yeah. That's the yeah. name of the spider that sits in the bottom of the pool. He said it doesn't hold its breath. <laughs> it's got uh, an air bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it did hold its breath, to be honest. Uh, and then, as you know, Steve was opening a, a letter we got. And it's a football song, and it's they don't like it up um, by the Leatherhead Gimpers. But it's just it's the fact we keep we keep getting sent <laughs> homemade singles. Uh, wow, that's good, isn't it? Oh, there's another one here. Uh, They're both football anthems, though. We don't. Well, do we show any interest in football? Are we? Well, football? well, yeah, the World Cup. We do, don't we? <laughs> You're right, Rick. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a bet on as well. Have you? Arsenal, uh, uh, Chelsea to win two one. What today? Yeah. Mm. And I've got Chelsea to win two one, but Henri to score first, and that's that's something like. 30 to 1 or something. Best, best luck. Yeah. Best luck. Cheers. Brilliant. Right, so, spiders, that's the first one in room 101, isn't it? So you rude people in supermarkets, rude people in supermarkets, spiders that are either can- have got enough poison to kill a man, or are unnecessarily big. Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Right, good. Going well. Right. Uh, next one. Yeah. Stars in their eyes. <laughs> Blimey, it's a popular show. Can't you might like alienate a lot of people. Stand it. Um, what, what, I? Just, I think, if, if you've got a talent, right, um, there's loads of shows now that you can go on and make a killing. Yeah. Like, Pop Idol. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Pop Stars. Yeah. That sort of thing. So, people who will go on Stars in Their Eyes, they, they want to sort of be famous. Yeah. Um, they want to be a singer. What I don't understand is why I go on that show where you do all the hard work, got to do all the graft. Yeah. Uh, and yet, even if they win it, you never see him again. The guy who won last year, uh, Chris de Berg, Ian right. Moore. Ian Moore. Before but, last. But I was now with his own stuff. Yeah, but, <laughs> right. <laughs> How did he say that sold well? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't well, get it. What I like is when, uh, someone doing Edith Piav, like, wins a heat, and, uh, Matthew goes, well, I don't think you'll be going back to the, uh, cleaning job, will you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you will. Monday. <laughs> Almost certainly. Monday. She'll be back there Monday. Just yeah. Uh, and, and just the way, you know, in like the final last week where the guy who was Elvis won, and they're I all I thought he there. would though. I thought he was very good. No, he was good. <laughs> but, will we see him again? Do you know what I mean? I, what, what is his job? I don't know. He'll be carrying on doing that. There's, there's, there's gonna be no change to his life whatsoever. He's very good at what he does, but he's wasting his time on stars and the eyes. <laughs> so what's- I don't understand exactly what your issue is. You, no. you clearly like the show because you watched the final last week. He thinks- he, I, You I think agree think that people are talented. You think it's a waste of talent to go on stars and the eyes because it's not a vehicle to be famous, whereas something like- Pop Idol, yeah. Pop Stars, even yeah. Big Brother. Do you know what I mean? Go yeah. on that. Sit in a room all day, have a month off work. Because they're, they're, they're all big stars now, aren't no, they? No, no, but what I'm saying is- it's less work to sit in the Big Brother house, now and again just sing a song, and people go, oh, isn't he a good singer? You come out after having a, a month's rest or whatever it is you're having there. Yeah. You come out and there's loads of record companies, like, waiting for you to come out and give you a deal. And what happens then? When and you then, get a deal, when you cut a record, what happens to that record then? Then it's either sells or it doesn't. Uh, and, and actually, what happened to it? Uh, it didn't, it didn't sell. No, none of them did. But what I'm saying is, that is a lot easier to do than to all the graft that you have to do on Stars in the Rise and the pressure. What would you rather do? Buy Craig's Christmas record? Yeah. Or, um, Ian Moore's, uh, classics? Probably Craig, just because the guy on Stars in the Rise really thought he was better than Christa Berg. When he was singing and- <laughs> I think I'm better than Christa Berg. <laughs> yeah. no. He was singing and Chris, Chris de Berg came walking on. Did he cry? And he didn't stop and go, oh, I can't believe it, my big fan. He was sort of carrying on, like, don't interrupt me, I'll have a word with you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You think you should show the man he's actually making a little bit of living off? Yeah. Emulating. A bit of respect. A bit more respect. And the most annoying thing. I imagine them arguing, resting each other on the floor, saying, I'm Chris de Berg. No, I'm Chris de Berg. Like two ventriloquist dummies mm. just having a fight in the dressing room afterwards. <laughs> the, the most annoying thing of all with stars in their eyes, people who go on, and do people like, um, say like, I think, I think last, last year, someone went on and did Lamal. 
<laughs> now, <laughs> if you wanna, because the, the whole idea <laughs> with Stars and the Rise, <laughs> you get work off the back of that show by like companies, don't you say? Yeah. Let who will we book? Yeah. You could get the real Lamar for about thirty quid. <laughs> So, so why, why have an imitator? Well, it seems to me though, Carl. The problem is that show's been running so long that all the big names have already been done. So it's going to end up having to be, isn't it, Lamal or some yeah. old kind of fifty singer you've never heard of? Isn't that the problem? I remember when I uh, mean, it's just an it's just a, Eddie Reader was yeah, on there. Yeah, there was yeah. a movie by Eddie Reader, but it's uh, just a karaoke contest. It's just it, I yeah. don't think I think you're assuming that everyone on there wants to get uh, yeah, you know a recording they do, contract. They do, Steve. Okay. In, in that bit at the back where they say uh, and the boats are coming in, let's have a look at the tension now that's going on. And they sat there and they really think. They are Elvis, <laughs> and they are Luther Vandross. <laughs> <laughs> sat there, and like, if, if they were all sat there having Woke a Woke up this morning, looked at your picture just to get me started. <laughs> Filth. If they were all sat there, sort of thinking, oh god, this is a bit of a laugh, innit? But they're not, you can see that they all really want it. And it's but like- So what I'm saying is, who are you putting in room 101? Are you putting in the people who are just there to have a bit ev of fun? Everyone involved in that show. Including <laughs> Kelly? Yeah. He's a talented guy. You don't care. No, he's, he's, going in he's in there first, and then everyone else, everyone who enters it, the people who go and sit in the audience, everything. But it what would you do Saturday night? You'd love the show, you watch it every no, week. I, it was just on when I was getting ready to go out, and there's nothing else on at that time. Sure. And it was the final on Saturday night as well. Yeah, you gotta watch the final, aren't you? Yeah, the final, the really. final. Yeah. <laughs> well, who would you do if you went on the show? <laughs> Moby. I'd probably do. Ooh. It's not, it's not that you look like them though, is it? No, you saying like. Because they wouldn't let me on as Tracy Chapman. I was furious. That's right. Because I sound just like her, but they said. Bowie, Bowie. You do Bowie? Yeah. Can I hear your impression? No. Oh, come on. No, no, because you just said if you could go on and, and what have you, I'm, I'm saying that. Well, it's got to be someone you can do. I mean, obviously I'd go on as Will Smith because I can do the rapping. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not a good singer. I've never, never really been into singing. I've never done a live singing thing before. Haven't you? No. Not but if you, if there was a talent, if there was a talent show, if what there was a talent show on. What did you do? I did Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bangles and a mind, dressed up as a woman. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, it was when I was still going to school, so it was like... <laughs> well, I hope so. Twelve. And what, what, sorry, what was the, what, why did you do that? What did you mime to, and why were you dressed as a woman? <laughs> Where's the logic in this, is what I'm saying, Carl? What, what sort of act was this? Was I, think, it? I think I was meant to get old of some, like, Egyptian outfit. <laughs> Couldn't. <laughs> so I looked in my mum's wardrobe <laughs> and I had a dress. Dress, got, dress in a fez, carrying got, some lizards, that'd do it, wouldn't it? I had some boots and a wig on. <laughs> and how did you dance? <laughs> Look, he looks confused! He's confused suddenly by his own act. He's suddenly confused! The best bit was a also, it was like a, a proper talent show, do you know where you cover it all? Yeah. So I did like the dancing and the miming, and then I also did a bit of magic, right, <laughs> where I had like a cloth, <laughs> right, and, and I had it over my hand like that, and, and the crowd were like, oh god, what's he gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course they were. Go on, and what did they, and what was the trick? They weren't playing that. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd going, oh, what, what's the great <laughs> pill? one chorus. Ooh, Ooh what's she gonna do? Oh, what's the great pill coli? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. so, so what I did was, <laughs> I stood there teasing them, and, um, teasing the audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I pulled the, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a, a bird appear before your very eyes. Okay. <laughs> and I pulled the, the tea towel <laughs> off, and I just had hold of an egg. <laughs> and I said, oh, it isn't born yet. <laughs> they loved it. They? He's so they proud it. of that! Look at his face! Did you come up with that yourself? Yeah. Did you have any help at all? <gasps> no, no. Was, so, oh, you oh, did oh, Walk Like an Egyptian and Dress as a Woman, then you did the egg trick. And yeah. Then, and then I was also playing like a, a janitor. <laughs> because when the next person was singing, <laughs> I'd come on and all the electric went off. And uh, I came on going, oh, God, has anyone got 50p for the meter? Oh, you're quite a little show, showman, weren't you? And then, like, you know, the Did you win? Chucked, chucked us some money. Yeah. And, uh, Are you sure you weren't actually employed as the janitor? <laughs> <laughs> no, did you win? No, I think we came second. Some, this, this really tarty girl who did Madonna, like a virgin. And I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like you are. She was a right ropey little woman. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> so great! <laughs> oh, oh, Okay, really. so Spider Stars and Eyes, we better play a, a track, hadn't we? Oh, indeed, yeah. Bit of Tom McRae, this was a track we played a while back, I enjoyed it. Enjoying the music, we're loving it, aren't we? Indeed. Still to come, we've got, uh, another entry to Room 101, Carl's final entry, and then that um, giveaway, the famous giveaway with, uh, Enhance Carl's Life. Can I have some adverts though first, Carl? Cause I'm oh, getting a bit fed up with adverts for a little while. <laughs> 
Well, Carl, do you remember when I put up the waste paper bin on your head? <laughs> oh, classic, classic yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? What did I do to you today? Well, you tried to bring the same memories flooding back to me by putting the same grotty bin on my head. But the annoying thing was, <laughs> last time we did it, it was quite a new bin. Yeah. Did it today. It's rank, all yeah. sorts of stuff on what it. What else did I do when I saw you around the corner down there? It's gone. I went, I went to get the paperwork and that let like, you need to produce the show. Yeah. And, uh, came around the corner. Ricky was sort of hiding, and I was concentrating, reading <laughs> stuff, and he goes, <laughs> I don't imagine it was as soft and gentle as that, I imagine it was more like, <laughs> exactly. like that. And he, I tell you what, I nearly exploded, because he's not hot on one day, right? <laughs> and the, <it's laughs> <laughs> he's not a, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but he's, I was walking that and I was looking down and I went, ah, and he got like that and he went to <laughs> Uh, rest assured, listeners, that if you were here, it's not any funnier than it is if you were listening at home. It's only amusing to Ricky. But oh! It, it oh. makes you feel really refreshed. <laughs> what he, a he was going on and having a heart attack like that. And I was, I was nearly having a heart attack laughing. And he went, I feel good now. He said, I can see why people skydive. <laughs> 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 he said, that would be good for people that were ill. Oh, yeah. Carl! They, oh! They, they, they've made a feel. How am I gonna, how am I gonna live without Carl for 14 weeks? Oh, you'll find other people to irritate. <sighs> oh, dear. Okay, so, uh, right, well, um, we got this, this final entry in Room 101, but we've also, um, had m uh, so many emails and letters about this competition, people trying to bribe you with things. I've been great. Can you read a few of more? Absolutely, yeah. Well, obviously, this is, uh, people are trying to win this, uh, bag that we got signed at the BAFTAs. We got Graham Norton, Angus State, and Alan Davis, Jamie Theakston, Paul Whitehouse, Baxendale, Helen, Steve Filmich and McFadden, Peter Davis and Simon Peck, Steve Rowe, all different people signing the big bag. Do you know what I think, though? Oh. I don't think people want that. I think they want to contribute to Carl's existence. Well, this is I what really genuinely think that Carl was sort of, you've, 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 you know, you've only one. How long have we been doing this now with you? Sort of like, you know, in the area, three months. Yes. I think you've, I think you've touched people's lives, Carl. I don't think I've ever met. Well, I haven't met you, but this. It, I think your soul comes across as like a cross between. I put it. It's like a cross between a cat and yeah. Rain Man. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, we've had quite a few, which are. Uh, uh, sort of, which obviously wants to kind of further your education. Obviously, when we're off air, this is something we, we're, we're worried that's just going to dry up, you know. And, and we've tried hard to educate you. So, lots of books, lots of people suggesting books. Um, the Giant Book of Mysteries. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you chose this one, Carl, it uh, tells you um, how three thousand Japanese soldiers literally vanished overnight. Real life accounts Ooh. of vampires. Uh, the man who planned his own crucifixion. Oh, the famous Carl. Ghostbuster Harry Price. Oh. Um, and Ooh. lots of uh, things it, about spontaneous combustion. Is this the, like. the one about the one with the hairball? That's not got the one in the hair in there. I'll have to see, that these, for these sort of books are the thing that I'm after. This is what well, you're I've, I've, I've brought in one as well. It's a, it's a, a friend who works with um, Jane, my girlfriend, called Liz, and she wants to put this forward. And this is trade secrets: everything you will ever need to know about everything. And it's just like little tips. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But there's so many things competing with that. You see, there's another guy you sent in. He wants to give you uh, a video entitled "Making Love: Parts One and Two: An Instructional Guide." I imagine mm -hmm. you'd enjoy that, Carl. No. Nah. No? Nothing they can teach you? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, the Reader's Digest book of strange stories and amazing facts, again, other stuff here. Why cats have nine lives, Carl? Well, hang on a minute. Why meteors are likely to destroy Earth in the next hundred years? You're wasting your time. Okay. In this, in this trade secrets book, yep. listen to this for a tip. Make a necklace from electrical wire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> but don't plug it in. What about <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't say that. <laughs> what about this then, Carl? Because <laughs> oh. obviously we're concerned that you didn't get your GCSEs or you didn't get as many as you'd have hoped. There's yeah. a guy here. This is Victoria, and she's saying she's more than willing to give you all of her awards and certificates. She's got six GCSEs, six A's, and four. But she's got many GCSEs. In fact, six A's, four B's, three A levels and a master's degree in philosophy. She's willing to give you those certificates. She says you will be the proud owner of qualifications. As the owner of qualifications, she has found that anything she says is invariably believed and that she's popular and very happy. She's yeah. willing to give you those qualifications. That's pretty impressive. You can claim they're your own. You have to change your name to Victoria, but other than that, I can see no problems. <laughs> and you have to put a dress on, uh, yeah. Fez. It's not <laughs> More like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, there's lots of educational ones. Then there's other things which are perhaps less useful to you. Um, this is, uh, doesn't, doesn't say who it's from, but, uh, I think it's Ruth, and she's happy to give you a statue of an ostrich that she made when she was seven. What about that? Alright, you love birds, you love animals. 
Yeah, um, apparently, statue. the legs fell off under the weight of the body, <laughs> so now it's just a legless ostrich, but even so. Yeah. Even so. I've only got a small flat and... Sure. Another woman here, she, uh, this I doubt if it's ostrich size. Yeah, it's, it's just clogging up space though, isn't it? This okay. is Lauren, she's willing to give you some of her handmade blue tack animals. She makes animals out of blue tack, she can give you an elephant, a seahorse, a tortoise, a pig, a butterfly, a fish, snail, even a stegosaurus, or anything you choose. See, I've got, I've got my art set on- You've got the books, you're excited about the books. Book. What about this though? This is a Lego alarm clock, with a little Lego man who's got a variety of hats. It says here, including biker's helmet and cap. Two, I think, of the village people. <laughs> I don't know, uh, Carl, if again people are picking certain things up. A clear stiletto mobile phone holder, with pink fur on it, flashes pink and green. I think people know that you are okay. listening. In this book, okay. listen, right? In this book, little tips and stuff. To one ear about if your dog keeps nicking a remote control. Sure. The way to get it off it, ring the doorbell. Right, so you gotta get off your chair, <laughs> go and ring the doorbell, <laughs> so the dog goes, watch that, and it dro- <laughs> it, it, jo it drops the remote control, goes running to the door, yeah. you, you run back and pick it up. I love the idea of Carl doing that. And then the doorbell goes, and Carl drops it and goes, and it's the dog pressing the doorbell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He sits back down, and Carl going, oh, no, not again. <laughs> I, I mean, I really do want- can't I just have this? You excited by that, are you? It's brilliant. What about this one, though, that you mentioned? This is, uh, a book which has got all those, um, urban legends and stories that you've read on the internet, and it tells you whether they're real or not. This has got the one in there, I know you're very excited about the one with the woman who stuck her head in the microwave. Yeah. Eh? Hey? Alright, it's not- Alright, so basically that she's saying here that whenever Ricky says, oh, it's not true, you can dispute- dispute that with your- your book? Yeah. yeah. What do you think then, Carl? Do I have a think about all these gifts There's and then- so much stuff, back? isn't there? Should we play a record and then come back? <sighs> Can I, Have you found something you like in there? You're so undecided, Carl. Hmm. I really like this book. Go on, and what is it? What have you else you found? What tip? Uh, God, there's loads of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, let's just- let's just pick one at random. Don't be too tidy. Leave some areas for hopeful, helpful garden animals to hide in. So when you're cleaning your garden and that, you know, it might look a bit of a mess, but think about the, the animals that are walking about at night in the uh -huh. dark and stuff. Yeah. Just little things you don't think about. Yeah, because they're pointless. Little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then we'll just play a record. Oh, there's so many to side on. Yeah. Very sad now. Ten minutes to go mm -hmm. and so much to cram in. Now, thing is, Carl's fallen in love with that book, but I feel a bit bad letting a friend sort of win when all these lovely people, these regular listeners, so I don't think you can have that. But I'll tell you what, I, I'll get, I'll, no, no, I'll borrow that or I'll buy it for you. So you can have that anyway. What, what have That's you That's safe, you're going home with that. What know, have you avoid washing up by boiling a bag of food. <laughs> <laughs> see, I can see why you'd love that. <laughs> exactly. Is there anything out, what, uh, 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 what, what other things have you caught your eye though? Put that um, book down. Yeah, uh, go on, go on. Um, well, well, one of our regular listeners who actually wants the bag and wants to be part of your life, come right. on. Well, Richard emailed in, right? And yeah. he's got a book, which is similar to the one I like there. Yeah. Which has got like 180 stories in it. Um, so, I mean, most of them are like, true, I think. Do you know, do you know I was telling you that story about the woman who put her, her head in the oven <laughs> to, to dry, to dry her hair? Yeah. Cause she liked the way- and she boiled her brain. Yeah, she stuck it in a microwave. Avo avoid washing your hair by boiling the brain bags. <laughs> so she put her head in the microwave? Yeah. And boiled her brains? Yeah. And boiled her brains. So she thought she'd get the same result as she did from the oven, but it all went wrong and that. And what do you mean? Brain. She used to dry hair in the oven? And she just like went modern? Apparently it's like what punks used to do. You can get, you get a different sort of heat off an oven than you do off a hair dryer. Right? Sure. So, um, she thought, well, I'll do it in half the time, use a microwave. Sure. She- Busy, she was busy, I she was late. I don't understand how you can get your head in a microwave. It only works when the door closes. Yeah, but you jam the little thing, don't you? Well, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't tell- I don't think it's possible, but don't- Of course it is. Yeah, well, well anyway, don't. But he's, do he remembers that story and said, I've got a book full of stuff like that. And, um, he sort of sums up a little story that's- that's in the book about this girl who, uh, she had long hair, right? And, uh, she used to always mess around with it. And, um, she's sucking on it. Do you know, like, how girls- girls do with the- with the long hair, they sort of yeah, mess yeah. around with it and stuff. Yeah. And she's sucking on it all the time. And she was doing this from the age of, like, ten. Mm. And then, I don't know, she's probably about thirty-odd. And, uh, she's doing this all the time. Guessing. And, uh, she goes, oh, God, my belly's hurting today, mum. And she goes, oh, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't know. You're thirty. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so she goes to the doctors 
and the doctors do an x-ray and nothing's coming up and it's like, I don't know what's wrong with you, you know, you're just being a bit moany about nothing. <laughs> like, no, honestly. <laughs> She's a very intolerant doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She said, this is- Piss <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this uh, is really hurting, I don't know what's up with it. So anyway, they, they found out some sort of system of, uh, looking at what, what was going on. Yeah. And apparently- x No, it wasn't x-ray, cause x-ray didn't show it up. Okay. It was something else. So, uh, anyway. It's only gone and turned into, like, she's been sucking her hair for so many years sure. that little bits have come off. Sure. She's got a giant air ball in her belly. Wow. Right? Yeah. Which was, like, huge, the size of a rat or something like that, right? The size of a... <laughs> it's so like interesting that. what he chose. Yeah. The no, size right. of a rat. No, no, no. Well, the funny thing is, when, when they eventually got it out, yeah. the, the mum was like, you know, oh, God, it was terrible. And that's what she actually said. It looked like a dead rat. Oh. Right. And it was in her belly, and that's like what was causing all the pain. Sure. And apparently, your your belly acids don't um uh. don't don't kill hairs because they're so fine it can't handle it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, right. I so you can you go for that book, Aya. That's the one I want. Who's yeah. the winner then? Who's the winner of the the lovely BAFTA What's bag? What's his name there? Richard Scholar, is that something? Yeah, Richard. Uh, yeah, Scholar or Scowler yeah. or something else. So he's the winner. So check it out. You're going to get that book coming to you. I'll get. I'll borrow this book but, for but you. I need oh. an email within like five working days to sort of. So what's your email? It's carl.pilkington at yeah. xfm.co.uk. Okay, lovely. I want an email from this guy uh, and I won't be sending the bag out until I receive the goods. Okay, <laughs> right, good. Enough. Well, we've only got a few minutes. I want to play Swade and I want to end with the Smith's track, so let's, let's play this. Do you know when you go away? Oh, yeah. It's sort of touched on this before. Is it, is this gonna be the Scouse guy? Yeah. Go on. Oh, it's so long though. I mean, it was all the day when we went to Tunisia. <laughs> and the scouts have pissed you off, surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the annoying thing was, you know, when you go on, on, uh, it was a cheap holiday and like the lesson here is, you know, if you want a good holiday, you gotta like spend some money. Yeah. And we didn't on this one, we spent about, I don't know, 400 quid for two of us for like a month or something ridiculous. And we got there and, you know, you, you get to the hotel and you go, we have made a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's a ropey hotel. Um, you know, you can tell, like, the blinds and stuff as you walk in, they're all dirty and stuff and things. Well, let's make the most of it, you know, let's not, let's not get down about it, it's, it's a holiday, it's sure. for a rest. And you try and make the most of it, and we had to meet, you know, like, you have one of those things where you get to your destination and the rep says, right, you know, go and unpack your bags and that, go and sort yourself out in the room, and, uh, tomorrow morning we'll meet up at ten o'clock and I'll go through, you know, the, the best sort of place to go for camel rides and, uh, you know, the best <laughs> deals I can get you. That sort of thing. Can anyone here walk like an Egyptian? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so she says, uh, right, tomorrow morning meet ten o'clock in the discotheque. So we get up and we have breakfast and it wasn't a good breakfast, uh, the kitchen was, like, Bit, bit horrible, the food wasn't good, and it was run by sort of midgets. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it was run? Not there's anything wrong with that. There was little fellas running around, and the annoying thing was one of them sort of started to fancy my girlfriend. <laughs> 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 How did he manifest his, his affection? No, for you're not saying there's anything wrong with midgets, though, are you? Just no, saying no, it was no, strange. That's that there was yeah, but even midgets shouldn't be cutting on on Carl. <laughs> no, I know, through. I know, no. But it's also that thing of the, you know they've got little fingers and I don't, and it's oh sort God, of. Ruined. I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm not. Th it's, it is a bit of a phobia of mine. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They are nice people and that. Sure. Um, oh God. But the annoying thing is. So what was he doing then? How did he? I, I don't understand how he was chatting up your girlfriend. Was he crawling under the table so you couldn't see? He just kept <laughs> whispering, <laughs> whispering to her from underneath there. <laughs> Stop it! Just, you know. Wait, I don't want to get a complaint on our last show. Oh, There's not many oh. What's going to happen? Can oh. we just finish this and start up again in a couple of months? Oh yeah. So if you want to more know more about the midget theme <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> then <laughs> just, just we'll talk you in we'll talk you in three months. Yeah. It's just oh. not, it's just no. That's fair enough. Actually. Oh yeah. yeah no. Right, sorry Carl, about this. Listen, title. um, uh, we'll see you in about a really um. It's been a pleasure, truly, and thank you for I've everyone that wrote I've got you a letters. Presents. Have you really? Yeah, I've got you both a present. Right. Oh. I got Ricky. Um. Do you know how like we've done fables and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is like Mr. Ben. Oh. This is brilliant. Yeah. Right? And it's like little fables that Mr. Ben goes on. Oh, fantastic. So I want <laughs> you to t learn something from that for when you come back. Okay, brilliant. That's I, lovely, I'll tell Carl. tell one of the stories I read this morning, it's brilliant. In fact, <laughs> when you've done with it, yeah. give it me. Yeah. Because I, I haven't finished reading that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And for Steve, <laughs> a little, uh, 
Oh, sharp lines. A little book of sharp lines. That's fantastic. That's great Thank you. Um, well, we're, st we're see you, um, in three months, but currently the man and Carl cherish Carl Pilkington. He sits in a little room by himself, so keep him in touch, and we'll see you in, um, August. I'm, uh, we're gonna leave you with some of the, um, we all, we all love. This is, uh, There is a Light that Never Goes Out by the Smiths. Very happy.